Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a wonderful Monday and I hope your Easter weekend was amazing. Mine was pretty effing fantastic, I must say. Um, I did vlog it all, so if you are subscribed, make sure you keep your eye open for that because it is quickly becoming one of my favorite vlogs. I am definitely glad I got it all on camera. <laughs> Moving on. So today's video, we are going to chit chat about the challenge Total Madness episode two. Um, if you watched my videos last season, then you already know that I am not the biggest D fan. I'm not. So this this episode, which mainly revolved around D, <laughs> was kind of difficult for me to get through. I why don't I like her? Um, so her first season, she didn't really bug me. I didn't really have an opinion on her. Her second season, last season, is what did me in for her. I just could not stand the way that she threw herself at Rogan. I hated the fact that she basically let him treat her like shit last season. It was ridiculous. Um, she essentially, and this episode proved it to me, didn't care that he did her dirty and that he thought that she was too weak to run a final and so on and so forth. And then in her own words in this episode, she said that after last season, they didn't really have much contact or much relationship, whatever. And so they're coming into this not together, not really like friends, just nothing. Homegirl decides to pick her bunk right above his. Out of all the rooms, that's the one that you choose, D. That's the bed that you choose, the one right above Rogan. And then, this episode, she proves just how crazy she is and how catty she is. And it's so frustrating because it's like, Rogan? Really? Over Rogan? This guy's D-I-C-K must like shoot out unicorn piss or something because he's got Jen and D, two very beautiful women, all up on his nutsack and I don't understand it. I don't see the appeal. Homeboy looks dirty, like take a shower. He looks sweaty. That's just how I feel and I don't understand how she could have acted the way that she acted in this episode over Rogan. Like, she's really working her way to being Jenna and letting dudes treat her like shit. It's weird to me. I just don't get it. Anyway, so this episode was not one of my favorites, to be honest. But it still was a good episode. It's just, it really made me roll my eyes a few times. Fonda, if you're watching, then you already know. I, you guys know I go live on TV Co. every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and on Fridays we watch the challenge. Well, Fonda was there. We were watching it together, so she saw me roll my eyes numerous times at D and her actions. But anyway, so the episode starts off with D being crazy. She is, her and Tori are overhearing a conversation between Jen, who is on The Amazing Race, and Dirty Rogan, unicorn piss slinging dick man, whatever. And she is she's just getting that look in her eye like oh my god jen is talking to rogan this cannot be happening i must target her forever now and that's basically what she did for the entire episode she targeted jen because she was flirting with rogan which is really mind-blowing to me like jen really <laughs> really like homeboy must be packing because i don't get it I, I mean it's not like he's very likable because he's not i i i don't know whatever you know whatever anyway so that's how the episode so episode starts d has set her laser eyes on jen all because jen was having a conversation with rogan uh, and the conversation wasn't even very flirtatious in my opinion it seemed very like advice kind of conversation like he was giving her advice and it was sprinkled with some maybe flirtatious fl vibes but it wasn't like a strictly flirtatious conversation that we like to me what we saw did not seem very threatening if i were d but d 
has something in her that is like, she's talking to Rogan, we can't have that, so we need to target her, and that's just what happened. Um, the competition this episode was actually pretty badass, in my opinion. I thought it was really entertaining. They, everyone was split up into three, into groups of three, so there was a shitload of groups of three all over the place. Uh, and they had to carry 15 of these, like, giant crates that were, like, 40 pounds each or some shit, and they had to run, like, a mile, maybe two, I don't know, but they had to run a long-ass distance and, you know, take the crates to this end point, um... You know, the first three teams that got the 15 crates to the end point made it to the next and final round, which was taking nine of those crates onto a helicopter and throwing the helicopter, throwing them out of the helicopter onto a target, which is difficult because they are up in the air. And so one of the teammates would have to look out the window and then tell them when to drop it. The other two would throw it and hopefully it landed on the target. Um, Jordan sucked at this competition. He did not come through and he felt it when they lost. His team only got two of the crates on the target. His team was, it was Jordan, Jenny, and Wes. Uh, the next team was Fessy, Melissa, and Kyle. And then the winning team was D, Swaggy C, and Corey. Um, all three great teams for sure. Jordan's team only got two of the crates, Fessy's team got seven, and Dee's team got all nine. So, Jordan really sucked ass. Um, and he was definitely being a poor sport about the loss. Like, he was throwing a big-ass tantrum at the end. And, I mean, I get it. Like, when I lose something, I really beat myself up. I hate it. I'm actually quite the poor sport myself, so I get it, Jordan. But at the same time, this isn't the first time you've lost, and it's probably not going to be the last because you are not challenge Jesus. You are not the end-all, be-all of the challenge, so you are probably going to lose some more. Accept it. Do better next time. Um, I really enjoy Tori in their relationship because she really, like, puts in, like, like, calm the F down, dude. Like, relax. You know? And so I do appreciate Tori in that because Jordan is a wild one. He can really, like, spark off quick, as we saw many a time in the past. So this was another one of his moments where Tori had to, like, calm him, calm him down. Everyone else was like, oh, my God, he's being such a poor sport. Like, calm down. It's really embarrassing. But so, Tor so D... Corey and Swaggy C made up the tribunal. Tori, she wanted to get her happy little ass up in that proving ground because she wants to earn her Red Skull and she thinks that D owes it to her to help her get into the proving ground. D's main target obviously is Jen. She wants Jen out of here because she was talking to Rogan. It's that simple. Um, but who is Jen going to go up against? Who? Well, everyone now, because of the twist, they want to go in. Um, and if, I'm sure you guys know, but if you don't, the twist is everyone has to go into the proving ground and earn themselves a red skull or else they can't run in the final, which I love because now people like Rogan, who last season were too chicken shit to go into the proving ground, have to. So I love this, this twist. It's amazing to me. Um, and so Tori was really wanting to get in. D was like, oh no, but I gave my word to Jenny that she's going to do it. So I'm not going to go back on that. And Tori was like, what? <laughs> what? Jordan was pissed off about that. He's like, uh-uh, I helped her ass win last season. She needs to do us a solid right now. Tori took that conversation to D and told her, like, hey, we helped, or Jordan helped you last season. You need to help us. And D was not buying what she was trying to sell, and she ended up agreeing for Jenny to go into the proving ground against Jen. So it was a battle of the Jens, to be honest. Um, at the proving ground, oh, I almost jumped the gun because at one point Jen and Dee got into a little tiff 
over the whole thing. It wasn't that exciting, but I wanted to mention it. D claims to be a badass bitch, blah, 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 and like a crazy ass, like, oh, you know, you don't know who you're messing with until you piss me off kind of person. And she was given the opportunity very quickly to prove that at the proving ground thing. And she kind of dropped the ball. TJ told them all that the just because you're in the tribunal, you can you don't have to vote someone else in. If you want to and you want to go down and earn your red skull, you can do that. So basically, D had the opportunity to not only earn her red skull but be the one to get rid of Jen and thus proving her dominance over the oh so threatening and terrifying Jen um and she fumbled the ball dropped it she didn't do it she said no I'm gonna I'm not a person who's gonna break my word so I'm gonna let Jenny go in and do what she needs to do whatever and everyone was kind of looking at D like really really come on now I understand <coughs> excuse me I understand, like, sure, she wasn't going there mentally prepared to compete in any way. She was in jeans, she was likely hungover, whatever. But she was talking a lot of shit. She was talking so much crap to Jen and acting like Miss Badass all around the house. And she was given the opportunity to not only prove herself but earn a red skull and she didn't over Jen who everyone including D was saying was the weakest girl in the house you couldn't have a better opportunity if you are so badass and such a great competitor then you should have been able to defeat the biggest or the the weakest girl in the house even in jeans even hun even hungover that's I mean me me I wouldn't be able to do any of those damn competitions like like you probably will never find me on the challenge because I could never do like they do a lot of running and I don't do that I just can't like I'm not a runner um so no you won't ever find me on the challenge acting like Miss Badass that I can do whatever unlike D. D was throwing out a lot of those praises about herself and had the opportunity to prove herself and she didn't take it so feels bad for her looks a little weak in my opinion like you really could have taken out jen who as you guys all said was the weakest in the house if you're so great then you should have been able to do that even in jeans even not mentally prepared but whatever jenny is a beast and she got jen out of there like that it was really the easiest slightly embarrassing thing i've seen in a while um but Jen was a good sport about it, and so I do hope to see her again because she gets under Dee's uh, skin, and I love that, so. But that was the episode. It wasn't, like, the greatest, in my opinion. Um, I'm really hoping we don't see much of Dee this season. Although, it looks like in the next season, Homegirl is all up on Jay. So, let me get this straight. You're pissed off at Rogan because... He's flirting with Jen. And then the next episode, you go and make out with, I think it was Jay, but it could have been someone else. Regardless, you make out with someone else while Rogan is right there. <laughs> like, make up your mind. Do you want Rogan or do you not? Because if you don't, then let homeboy do his own thing. Like, come on. That's, ugh, she's just frustrating. <laughs> anyways let me know in the comment section what you guys think I don't know I do know that this season is gonna be really good I'm enjoying it so far yeah so make sure you join me on Fridays on the TV Co app at 5 p.m. Pacific time we watch the challenge together and it's always a lot of fun and please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share this video I really appreciate it I love you guys so much